Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to the YouTube channel. My name is Grace. If you are new here and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you for tuning back into this video. This is going to be a part two of the I unknowingly joined a Korean cult story. So I know that I... It, there has been a lot of time that passed by ever since I dropped the part one and um, some of you guys are complaining that you were already you are already forgetting the part one and I actually even thought about it I'm like yeah like duh <laughs> I didn't want any more time passing by because um, yeah like the thrill is not there anymore because you guys now have been like waiting and I'm so sorry for that I didn't think about that until someone when I was at the hospital mentioned like yeah when are you releasing a part two I have been waiting and I'm about to forget the part one but anyways guys if you haven't watched the part one go ahead and do that and then come back to this part so that you can understand what I'm talking about but um before I start the part so I'm going to do a quick rundown of what I was talking about in part one so today I am having this berry soda um, I got this from this game. It is sugar free, um, something something else free, <laughs> and preservative free. So um, I'm going to open this. So guys, I'm on a healthy journey. I'm trying to cut down on sugar. So I have been buying this sugar free drinks. My phone literally says that I only have thirty minutes of filming. So I'm hoping to finish this part two in that time. And guys, school has me by the throat already. We have started with our clinical placements and guys, I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. Even on weekends, my weekends are filled with me preparing for the week because basically during the week I go for from 7.30, I leave the house well, I leave the house at 7 and then at 7.30 I need to be at the hospital. And then at 4, I take cab to go to town and then from town I go to boot camp. And then I only get back home at like around 7 and then I have to like shower, eat dinner <laughs> and then prepare for tomorrow and then I sleep. So I try to sleep at 8 so that I wake up at 4 and then at 4 I can do my... If I have paperwork, then I do the paperwork. And if I have to study, then I study. So like every second, every hour is already accounted for. And I feel like there is just no time for YouTube. But today I am challenging myself, even though there is quite a few things that I still have to do. And the time right now is 26 minutes past 5 p.m. And I have a treatment plan due that's due today and i have to study because on friday we are writing a test so i hope that you understand how crazy my schedule is and when it comes to youtube i am really really trying my best and i, I was even thinking about not filming this video but i was like i cannot disappoint you guys like that you guys are coming through for me guys i i forgot i forgot guys we just hit 500 subscribers guys I am so excited. I am so happy. Thank you so much for subscribing, for showing your love, guys. This channel will just continue growing. That's it. That's it. And because of that, I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best. So if you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Please subscribe. It is really keeping me going. So yeah, guys. I have been rambling. Let's get into this video. Yeah, guys, before I continue with part two, if you, you know, if you are watching this video and you don't know what a cult is, I would like to quickly read a cult definition for you guys. So this one says that a cult is a relatively small group of people having beliefs or practices, especially relating to religion, that are regarded by others as strange or sinister or as imposing excessive control over members. That's by 
export google definition <laughs> i read export somewhere there yeah but that is basically what a cold is so going back to i think um when i did part one i skipped quite a few things that happened during sender class so i would just like like to mention a few of those things that i left out so this will also like sort of like give you a basic idea of what i was talking about in part one yeah so like i said in part one i basically joined a korean cult unknowingly and of course when i was joining it i didn't know it was a cult i was basically and genuinely looking to strengthen the relationship that i have with god and i just wanted to learn the word of god so the center classes i really cannot remember the timeline but it was about seven to eight months um yeah like all of these things are now becoming a distant memory in my mind even though like it was this huge significant event that took place that literally changed the the way that i view the world so um when we're in center classes one of the things that they did teach us was something that was called etiquette training so basically in etiquette training they teach you specific behaviors that you should you know how to carry yourself as a believer as someone who is now receiving the true word the revealed words you get <laughs> most of these behaviors were related to the korean culture so for example we had to greet each other in korean so when you see you know like someone specifically at the center class or even after we passed over when we um, went to the church we had to greet by bowing down and saying hello in korean so like annyeonghaseyo <laughs> annyeonghaseyo that means hello and you bowing basically represents you acknowledging the spirit of god within that person and another behavior that they taught us was to um, whenever you are communicating with god whenever you are praying you had to kneel down and bow and then pray i mean um, i guess that's not strange um most like most churches do that and um what was another behavior another behavior was that we had to do a lot of things in sync so for example when we are worshiping and we are clapping and um like we are what do you call this swaying we had to all like go in the same direction in sync have you guys seen i think it's korean or china soldiers like how they do everything in sync yeah we were the soldiers of god and so we had to do everything in sync and we were basically being compared to the weeds you know like um in matthew some way it says that the weeds will be the the wheat the weeds will be harvested while the wheat will be burned so like you know when the when they swing the 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 weeds they they sway together all of them so that's what we're representing and just like it looks clean and nice in the eyes of god so another behavior was removing your shoes when you are entering um the class so these behaviors were introduced little by little to us um by the way if you are wondering so we had to remove our shoes and this was justified by a bible verse um i think i cannot really remember but i think there was it was moses yeah it was moses when god was revealing himself to moses he asked moses guys if i'm totally wrong i'm sorry but i think it was moses <laughs> if, um so um moses was asked to take off his shoes because he was entering a holy place because he was basically coming face to face with god so that was the same justification we had to take off our shoes and um and you know do whatever whether it was worship or learn the word of god um another behavior oh yeah another behavior that we had to learn was to say really really loud amens so um for example when someone is teaching the word we all had to agree and say amen and it it couldn't be a soft amen it had to be a loud amen like proclaiming like amen amen <laughs> yeah so every after every sentence there were loud amens 
Whether you agree or not, you're gonna say, Amen! <laughs> but that came towards the end of the center class and basically they explained, you know, like all the behaviors were basically just justified with the Bible. And then another thing also, we had to chant a lot. We had to chant a lot and you know like when when um, soccer teams or rugby teams are going to play they chant together to show unity and like to show courage so we had to do that a lot especially when we're going when we are going out to ev or like um ev basically means sorry guys I, <laughs> yeah but ev basically means going out and harvesting people bringing people to the cold but at that time, obviously, we didn't think it was a cult. So bringing people to God, right? So, yeah, so like we, we used to chant um, to energize ourselves, be energized and go out as a soldier of God. So I think also if you look into psychology, chanting is one of the ways that people get, um, people, you know, cults can use chanting as a way to manipulate people's minds something like that i'm not a hundred percent sure but like doing everything in seeing going with whatever the group says um i think there's a term for it i just cannot think about it now also after we were introduced to the promised pastor we were taught to call him sansonim so the word Sansanim is a Korean word that meant teacher because he was teaching us the word. So basically when we, um, after we passed over, um, when we passed over, you receive very intensive trainings and um, the more obedient you were to their teachings to the word of God, um, you were regarded as an obedient believer and the more that God can use you as a vessel. So then you will be basically entrusted with duty. So for me, the first duty that I received was Egyokchenim. So basically Egyokchenim, that's in Korean, Egyokchenim is um, a, like, like a soul litter, like a group litter, like a soul litter. So I was, uh, I was basically entrusted with like five to four, it ranged from four to six people at a time. So basically what that duty entailed was that I was responsible for these people's faith work. I had to make sure that they are growing in their faith. And I also had to like arrange meetings, either, um, either like trainings, educations or um, um, service or um basically just going out for ev so i had to like make sure that all of these members are carrying out their duties which was um so for the like the members who were not georgians their duties basically included giving tithe um going out to evangelize people um attending service and attending the specific education that they needed to attend so basically education is just trainings where you are basically just taught the word over and over and over and over and over and over again you see the brainwash yeah and sometimes you know the meetings could just be and sometimes it could just be like me arranging so that we can all meet together and pray so do you guys remember when i told you in the previous video that we were basically not allowed to miss any classes when we were in center class. That was basically preparing us for when we started attending service. So service was attended on Wednesdays and Sundays. I don't know if I mentioned that in the previous video. And people wear black and white. So if you are a guy, you wear um, black pants and a white shirt and sometimes a tie and the tie would be um, would be pink and then um, and then for the ladies we would wear a white shirt official and uh, a black trouser or if you want you could wear a dress but it should be like modest and you had to wear stocking underneath so that was the attire and you were basically not allowed to miss service if you missed service that that was considered as something big like a big scene in God's eyes and um yeah so 
that's what the classes were training us for so that we don't miss service now imagine this service was attended twice a week and you were not allowed to miss for any reason basically for them what service meant was that you were coming to receive the water of life from the river. So the river is most the source of water. So the river was Sansanim, the promised pastor. So now if you miss service, then you are not receiving the water of life. That meant that you are not washing the rope of your heart. <laughs> so basically, if you don't wash your heart, then it means that you are dirty. And then that's how your spirit eventually dies. And if your spirit dies, then you fall away from the kingdom of God, which is Shinjongji, this church. And you basically belong to Satan. And if you belong to Satan, where do you end up? Hell. So they used to use a lot of fear tactics to keep the members in the church. Because they used to reason that they are the only church where God is, where the truth is. And we had to basically bring everyone to Shinjongji because this is where God will come back to. And God only acknowledged the people that are in Shinjongji. So you can imagine knowing that God is depending on you to bring everyone to him. How hard we had to evangelize and bring people to this place. And... Um, um, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, but basically because this is the only place that God is with. So if you are not attending church here at Shinjongji, there is no other place you can attend um, church. There is no other place you can meet God. So if you are not there, that means that you are back in the world and the spirit of Satan can now enter you and make you seven times worse as it says in the Bible, and um, and that meant that you will go to hell. And of course, nobody wants to go to hell. And this is how um, the members in this cult end up staying there. Even when things become difficult, there is no other place to tend to. There is no other place to go because you are basically brainwashed that this is where the truth is. There is no other truth. There is no other place guys it gets intense and i don't think i will be able to go in all the details about this cult but i will be linking um, a few youtube links about people who talk about this cult and one of those people is laurie laurie was um, an instructor for seven years at shinchenshi he also taught me revelation <laughs> he taught me revelation when i passed over but he left shinchenshi now and he makes video bringing awareness um, on this issue. So yeah, you guys must definitely go check out his videos. He really goes into detail about the skull and this will benefit you or, ben or it will benefit someone close to you if you are aware of the skull because it is so easy. The tactics that they use, the manipulation, it is so easy for someone to fall into the skull. So now imagine you are a student, you came to Ventuk to study. And for holidays, you must go home. But now, you cannot go home because you need to attend service twice a week. So we were basically not allowed to travel because if you travel, what happens? You miss service. Your heart is dirty. Satan is using you. My sister, you will fall away. You will go to hell. Okay, it's not funny. But yeah, um, so we were not allowed to travel. So if you travel... You had to travel, but make sure that you attend service. So there were a few cases when they would allow you to attend service online. Only a few cases. And if you wanted to travel, you had to let them know before time. You had to let them know like your whole plan, your whole itinerary. When are you coming back? Who are you going to visit? You know, like how are you going to make sure that any material that you have of Shinjongji is not being seen by other people. How are you gonna how are you gonna come back? How are you gonna attend trainings, educations? How are you going to be able to do all of these things? So there was no freedom and they basically controlled every aspect of your life. And you you would actually also like they will make you feel so guilty if you 
don't do any of the things that you are required to do either tithing attending service or um bringing people to the church um yeah so and then guys yo yo hold on i will i will get into it now i'm i'm getting i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> Yeah, so for everyone, for, you know, for those people that really, really struggled or really had like difficult environments that didn't allow them to like always attend service or always, you know, tithe or always go out to um, ev evangelize people. Those people that struggled were seen as struggling member. And even in the name, you can hear the stigma, the stigmatization of that word struggling you are a struggling member so there were a few reasons why you're a struggling member you don't do enough you don't work hard enough you don't love God enough those were some of the reasons and this was you didn't want to be labeled as a struggling member um, because you are in this huge community you are in this huge community where there is no secrets amongst members and everything is shared with everyone. So that was like one of, that's one of the, uh, let me say the ugly things about this place that can really have a detrimental effect on your, on your, on your mental health. Because imagine if you are there, you really want to do everything that you can for God and there's someone telling you that you're not doing enough. And um, and it seems like whatever you did was never good enough. You there was always an expectation that you had to reach, no matter how hard you are trying, no matter how little sleep that you are getting. There was always another expectation, and if you don't reach that expectation, then you are labeled as a striking member. And another thing was also that was also heavy or that played a huge part in my mental health going downhill while I was at that place was that people were being compared to each other. And you know, if you grew up in a home where you were constantly compared to other people, that becomes trauma. <laughs> so I grew up in a place like that. We were a lot. So, you know, um, the, the elders used to compare us with each other and that was not cool. So, being in this place, basically, I was reliving this trauma over and over again because everyone was being compared to other people. And they used to justify this as, oh no, this is heavenly competition. And if it, if, if it allows you to do the work of God, then it's good competition. You know, like you need competition in order for you to excel. Um, so this is heavenly competi competition. Competition. <laughs> competition and um yeah but it was it was not cool because you will be like we used to have this um digestion groups after service and sometimes you had to report on like how many people did you get to sign up for the center classes or what else was it basically mostly that and if you and, and if you didn't like have enough or if you didn't have any then you will be compared to someone else and then you will be embarrassed in front of the whole group. And they used to justify the, like, the harshness of, um, how should I say? So basically, if you don't meet the required standards, you were rebuked. Um, that's, that's, that's what we used to call it. You were rebuked and like harshly. <laughs> and that was justified through its, like mind over matter you need to change your mindset you need to do better like this is not enough so you were basically rebuked and you were embarrassed in front of everyone and now there is maria there who did better than you she got to two people to sign up why can you not be like maria why why are you struggling and maria is not struggling why is that maria could manage and you couldn't manage it's about the heart that you have for God. You don't love God enough. Okay, so yeah. So those are some of the words that they used to say. But some things were like, 
you can see the person is like really being harsh and unfair or like really like not according to the Bible standard and it was just and it would just be sugar coated basically yeah so i really didn't like the fact that people were being compared to each other um i yo i hated that with even when i saw it being done to someone else man yo i wanted to stand up for them but i couldn't because none of the group members were standing up against that and it was like yeah it was like the person whoever has authority over you were allowed to say whatever they want So another thing also, everything was justified um, by the greater picture. So the end justified the means. So <laughs> that included everything, the good and the bad. Everything was for God, for you to receive that please in heaven one day. That's why you are doing this. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But basically, even like I explained in part one, um, when we're told not to like share that we are attending these classes, that we had to use wisdom, we had to lie, it was justified by the end. So it was for the greater good. Yeah, the greater good. <laughs> Yeah, guys, when I'm thinking about all of these things now, I'm like, what? I know, I know. And you guys, probably because you didn't experience what I experienced, are like, like, why, Grace? Why? Why? Why were you there? Why? And guys, by the way, I was in this place. Oh, guys, I only have like four minutes. But I was in this place for three years. Three years. I was in this place for three years, so basically the eight months, including the eight months that I was in center class. And uh, by that time, I was a medical student when I joined. And so when I joined, I was literally being like pressured that I didn't have enough time for God. I wasn't doing enough for God. So you, you guess what happened? I left medicine um, to go study something that was easier so that i can have more time with god luckily there was um a lecturer from occupational therapy and someone just told me like just go speak to her and like maybe see if you can try and get into occupational therapy at that time we had like this mindset that oh occupational therapy is easy we see the occupational therapy students at campus they are like always relaxing and chilling um, guys, I don't know when this video is going to end, but wherever it ends, that's where we end <laughs> for this part. And I'm going to post it and hopefully next week I drop another one, okay? Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I went ahead and I spoke to this OT lecturer and she basically helped me get into OT. But now that I'm in OT, I'm like... I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. All I thought was that I was going to have more time for this cold. Okay. So that's how I ended up leaving medicine to go study occupational therapy. And you might ask, do I regret it? Um, at first, when I realized that this is a cult, I was like, hold up. What was that for? Why did I leave medicine for a cult? Um, but now that I have fallen in love with occupational therapy. I definitely love occupational therapy. I do not regret it. I just believe that I am where I am supposed to be. And everything happens for a reason. And everything happens according to God's timing. Um, <laughs> guys, I still have a lot to tell you about this cult. So please, if you have questions, drop them in the comment sections. And I will be posting the next part next week. I am so sorry. I am just pressed on time. I have to cook. I have to meal prep for the whole week. <laughs> and I have to clean. And I have to write up a whole treatment plan. So if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it was probably all over the place. But I tried to deliver something to you guys, okay? So thank you for watching. Make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video, share this video. And let's bring awareness to this cult. 
this cold must end. It must stop. They are still busy, guys. They are. account is a rel relatively <laughs> so i would just like like to run down looking 